So, what is truth in my worldview? Well, it's an axiom of the base object language, of course. <laughs> Ah, the great debate on YouTube. There's nothing quite as edifying as watching full-grown adults calling each other silly poo-poo heads. That's not to say, though, that the questions sometimes aren't decent questions. Questions, for example, concerning truth. To that end, I'd like to do a series of Talk to the Camera videos um, where I just discuss what I think about truth. I'd like to start off with this one, wherein I discuss the nature of truth bearers. So what is a truth bearer? Well, a truth bearer is the kind of thing that is eligible to have a truth value. To be true or false doesn't necessarily have to be true. I'm also not averse myself to a spot of dialectism or uh, intuitionistic logic, but to keep matters simple here, I'll just say that the truth value is either simply true or simply false. Clearly, there's a whole host of things that are eligible for truth. States of affairs, beliefs, arrangements of words. The question then is which of those is the primary bearer of truth? The vehicle of truth from which the truth of the others is derived. Well, in my opinion, it's the latter of the three. Arrangements of words. So, the truth of a state of affairs is derived from that reality having been stated. And the truth of a belief is similarly derived from the statement of that belief. The most straightforward and simplest way of assessing whether an arrangement of words is truth eligible, at least that I know of, is that such an arrangement can be meaningfully prefixed with it is true that X, or postfixed with X is true. Unlike questions or exclamations, it doesn't make sense to say uh, is it true that can fish wink or ah is true. What? Some of these eligible statements are what we call indexical. What that means is that their truth value depends on when, where, and who said them. You know, like, um, it's Rome, it's 160 BCE, I'm Spartacus. Others, such as 2 plus 2 equals 4, well, they don't depend on those things. Okay, so we're philosophers, we love complication, so there's some more issues. There's tokens versus types, there's types versus type occurrences, and there's use versus mention. But at the end of the day, when we've conceptualized ourselves silly, it all boils down to this. There is a type of statement which meets all the criteria that I've presented to you so far, but which is not a truth bearer. And it's a type of statement that you probably recognize from the liar paradox. Statements like, this statement is false. Well, if it's true, it's false. But if it's false, it's true. Yeah, not really looking forward to trying to formalize that as an axiom in the base object language. Russell's paradox, Gödel's theorem, you know the drill. So, um, statements of that kind, not truth bearers, according to the axiomatic semantic theory. On which theme, I'll leave you with a conundrum. If sola scriptura inherentism is true if the bible is the sole source of truth and is without error then one would expect in it somewhere a statement to the effect that everything in the bible is true now whilst that's an example of the truth teller paradox rather than the liar paradox if it shares the same semantic form as the liar paradox then according to the theory of truth bearing that i'm presenting here it's not true. It's not a truth bearer. So there is something in the Bible then that is not true. And the sola scriptura inherentism therefore seems to be inherently incoherent. And with that, I'll say thank you for listening. <laughs>